Hi, welcome back. This is the third episode. In this episode, I'll talk about if statements and loops. These are a pretty important concept in computer science. And after this, you have all the knowledge to make our first game, guessing the number. In the next episode, I'll be making the game with you guys. And now let's dive right in into the concepts. Okay, so before I start the if statement and while loop, I just want to talk about uh, how the code, how does the, how does the compiler actually reads the code? So this is pretty uh, beginner, but um, I just want to tell you guys that just like how you read, um, the compile the compiler reads the code execution from top to bottom. So it will read, for example, creating this variable first. It will read, this is how you initialize a variable, but there's no value in it. And it will read that first, and then it would read the the next execution, which is let's say making the variable equals to zero. So, but if you put the variable in front of the declaration, it will not work. So, so that's just something that I want you guys to know, a heads up before I jump into today's uh, video. Now let's start with if statement. Okay, so this is how you make an if statement. Oh my bad. So this is how you make an if statement. So it consists of two parts. One is called a condition part, and it is between these two parentheses. And there's a second part, which is where you execute your code, and that will be between these two curly brackets. So what happened with the for loop is that the program will only run the code within these two curly bracket if the condition is true. So let's make a true condition. One is less than ten. Well, that's a true condition. So this whatever is inside here will definitely run. And let's say let's just print out so that we can see the if statement run. And let's run it. Now it runs very nice. So now, now there can be a false statement as well. So let's say 200 equal equals one. So what is 200 equals one? Well, it is the same thing as it's asking is 200 equals to one. But you might ask, why don't we just use one equal? Well, if you remember correctly, that um, one equals used when we set a variable and we don't want to set 200 equal to one so we just use a different method we just to distinguish the two and we just make it another one just add another equals and now this will not run because the condition is false and the code will not be executed and now let's add a l statement so this is a cool thing about if statement is that you can add else statement to it so in the condition where now 200 equal, equals 1 equals to false so this code will not run however when that equals to false it will run the code in the else statement so let's say let's just to see it for ourselves the else statement run runs. now Let's run it. The else statement runs. And one cool thing about if statement is that you can add a and to it. So let me show you how. So what I did right now is that I changed the if condition to becomes if 200 equals to 1 and 100 is less than 1000, then this code will run. Just like how it's applied uh, in English is uh, saying that it will only run the code if both of them evaluates to true. Well, in this case, it will not run the code because one of them is false. The first condition is false. So 
it will not run and it will run the else statement instead. You can add out as many and on this as possible, but when one of them equals to when one of them equals to false, then it will not run. There's a different one, it's called or. Well, or is different from and of course, and it will only run if one of these statements up here is true. Well in this case it will run because hundred is less than a thousand. Let's see. Now it runs the if statement now. Now let's talk about for loop. This is how you make a for loop. So this for loop right here runs five times exactly. So what is a for loop? For loop is a loop, it's a looping algorithm. I mean not necessarily algorithm, it's a it's a loop that loops for a certain amount of time. So whatever code is inside here will loop five times right now. And although it looks complicated, but the concept is actually pretty simple. So what it does is that it creates an integer uh, integer value or variable and set it equal to zero. And then it put a limit on it, say that the variable can only be less than five. And I plus plus here, what it means is that it will increase, it will increase the variable every by one every time you run, every time the code in here is run. So let's just print something out to see. loop and let's run it five loops now now um, you can change this number right here to any number you want it can be a hundred a thousand and let's see when we make it a hundred It loops a hundred times, and one cool thing about uh, for loop is that you see the i right here. It can be changed to any name as well. It can be uh, any name, like like really long name, lo really long name as well, like uh, runtime. Um, and it will work. And you, there's a trick with it too. So. This variable right here can be called within these two curly brackets, but it will not be recognized outside. Like if you say runtime equals zero outside, it will give you an error. But if you call it inside here and just watch this loop, and then if you just look at this and then run it. Now it start off with loop zero and it increases to loop ninety nine. Well, so what is going on is that um, remember when I said the runtime variable increases by one, um, that means that the value increases by one, and then you can call the value inside these two curly brackets, and it can be printed out by using a plus. So I print out the loop string plus the runtime and it shows on the screen loop plus the runtime and it increments and now let's me show you while loop while loop is kind of like an if statement and for loop had a baby while while loop also consists of a condition within here and it will run the code within these two curly brackets as long as the condition equals to true. So with that being said, um, let me show you how you can work with it. Let me create a boolean variable called state. And let's set that equals to true. So I'm gonna put state equal equals true. So what this means is that while the state equal equals to true code within these two curly brackets will run. 
Now let's put something in it. Well, let's just say system dot out dot print. Uh, animate is cool. So, so right now, this right here will run forever. Why? Because state is always equals to true. And it will run forever, forever, however, and then we call that a heuristic. That means that the program never ends. And you don't want that because then it would just go on forever and take a, I don't know, doesn't do things. <laughs> Anyways, um, now this will run forever and then let me run it and show you why. Well, it keeps saying anime cool, and it is true that anime is cool and forever. But we wants to make sure that it has an end to it. And how are we supposed to do that? Well, why don't we do something uh, similar to a for loop? Let's say we want to end it when we run it a thousand times, and let's create a integer variable called counter and set that equals to one and we want to end the program when it reaches a thousand times so let's say if the counter equal equals to a thousand we would how do we supposed to stop it well this loop runs if state equal equals true so we can stop it by simply making it false But if you run this, it will continue to be a heuristic because, well, we didn't increase counter. Counter is always one. So what we want to do is that at the end of all the code, we want to increase counter by one. Well, let me show you a trick. Uh, if you just type this out, it's pretty, it's, it's too, it's like, there's a shortcut, shorter way to do it. You gotta type counter twice. And you know, a programmer doesn't like that. We like to save times um, by doing plus plus. Now this will increase by one. And you might recall this familiar from the for loop. Yes, this is meaning counter plus counter equals counter plus one. Now you can save some time, watch more anime now. Cause now I teach you a shorter way to, you know, write counter equals counter plus one. Now, in the end, let's just want to say something in the end, saying that this end, um, well, anime is always cool. And let's run it. It runs, and this is a thousand times. Well, that's as many episodes as Naruto has. Anyways, <sighs> now that's while loop. Up next, well, we will make our own game, our first game. Guess the number within we're using all the knowledge that we just have seen. An if statement, while loop, variable, for loop. Yeah, we will use most of it. And in the, so, stay tuned for the next episode and see you. Stay safe. Bye.